You've most likely seen this dramatic image on TV before. The Forest Service dropping a bright red spray from an aircraft. It's fire retardant. The Forest Service says it's one of their most important tools to slow the progression of a fast moving wildfire. But when retardant lands in water, it goes from a tool to a toxin, killing fish like these steelhead in 2009 in a creek in Santa Barbara. Hundreds of juveniles were wiped out by an accidental drop of fire retardant. Two accidental drops happened here in the Omac Creek on the Colville Indian Reservation. That was 20 years ago. The retardant killed thousands of steelhead and endangered salmon species. It's heartbreaking. Virtus Campbell is a member of the Colville Indian tribe who lives just yards away from Omac Creek, an historical fishing ground for the Colvilles. In 2001 and again in 2003, the Forest Service inadvertently dropped retardant into the water, according to the U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife, causing catastrophic environmental harm. And that's what we're working for, to get all the um, fish to come back that way, because that's our heritage, and that's what we do. And that's what um, the big thing in our life. And so when you hear about a fish kill by a government agency, it's sad. The Forest Service invented fire retardant in the 1950s and for 70 years kept quiet about how often it was getting dumped into water and killing fish. Other polluters, like businesses, cities and counties, have to report what and how much pollution they're putting into waterways. And federal law, the Clean Water Act, mandates they get an EPA permit to do so, to make sure they're not hurting wildlife. But not the Forest Service. For years, they argued they don't need a permit. In 2011, they told the public and the EPA they keep a 300-foot buffer zone around rivers and lakes that ensures retardant wouldn't be discharged into water, so a permit isn't required. They look at this, this firefighting as a war where it doesn't matter how much collateral damage they cause. Andy Stahl is executive director of a nonprofit that sued the Forest Service last year for allegedly violating the Clean Water Act. It turns out a 300-foot buffer zone isn't always cutting it. Legal action a decade ago forced the Forest Service to start tracking how often their drops miss the target. And last year, they reported those numbers for the first time ever. I was blown away that the Forest Service's error rate was so high. From 2012 to 2019, they dropped retardant into or near water 459 times, totaling 760,000 gallons. We found that includes 45 drops in the Northwest, including waterways in the Okanagan Wenatchee and Gifford Pinchot National Forests. And here we've got the agency charged with protecting that water actually being the biggest polluter of the water out there. The Forest Service declined an interview request, but sent a statement saying, we believe retardant can be and has been delivered without compromising public health and the environment, and that they're continually working to improve formulations to minimize potential adverse impacts. We are incredibly careful and precise in our use of fire retardant. In March, the Forest Service deputy chief testified in a congressional hearing that retardant is key for their success in fighting wildfires. The use of fire retardant is a critical wildfire suppression tool that we will continue to use appropriately and widely to protect communities from the threats of wildfire. To look into alternatives for those toxic chemicals, we traveled to Chico, California to meet a team who's researched and developed possible options, a company called Green Fire. In August, the Chico Fire Department demonstrated how they use their products. It's the only fire suppression line listed as meeting USDA standards for being safe enough to even use near food production. We know we have a product with great efficacy that does not harm the environment. In 2021, the Green Fire founders got a meeting with the Forest Service top brass to talk about trying out non-toxic alternatives. What was the response? Not much of a response at all. It was pretty much dismissed from the beginning. It's unclear why the agency wouldn't discuss another option, one that wouldn't kill steelhead and salmon already on the brink of extinction. We do know use of the current formula is going up. Federal records show in 2012, the Forest Service dropped 8 million gallons of retardant on wildfires. In 2020, the amount shot up 
to 21 million gallons. Water is so precious. We hear about it constantly on the West Coast. So you would think you would take every measure to protect that for the future. This spring, a federal judge ruled that yes, the Forest Service is breaking the law, violating the Clean Water Act, and the agency needs to get a permit. But that could take up to three years. In the meantime, the court is allowing them to keep using retardant. Everything that they throw in the river or the creek, it's not good for them. People like Virtus Campbell from OMAC hope while doing so, the Forest Service thinks about yeah. them. It's been hard. And their water. How would you summarize like what salmon and salmon species like steelhead mean to you and mean to other members of the Colville tribe? It's like life. I mean, that's what brings life to us. Every stream on this reservation is very important. That's our life. The Forest Service's own records show that retardant hurts more than aquatic life. It can also harm plants, birds, and mammals. But when it lands here in the water, that's when it becomes lethal. In Seattle, Susanna Frame, King 5 News.